This is Duke University. In the dissertation, I look at two different black power movements, one in Britain, uh, composed of West Indians, West Africans, and South Asians, and another in Israel, which was made up of Arab Jews. Uh, and in both cases, these groups migrated to those countries, Britain and Israel, and found that the conditions of living for them were not what they had expected and hoped for. I have a chapter that examines photographs of British Black Panthers, and I look at two different sets of photos. One is a set of photos that were taken by a photographer named Neil Kenlock. He became the official photographer of the group. I have found a way to photograph black people so they can become proud <laughs> of themselves, because when I was doing it, they were submissive. <laughs> they would just stand up and no life in them. And then I look at another set of photographs that were taken by the British police of protests in which they were trying to identify the members of this group in order to arrest people that they thought were causing disturbances. So I'm really interested in how photographers can use the camera as a tool to either present a message to the media of who their group is or to use the, the camera as a tool to identify people. I also have a section where I talk about space. Jews coming from all these different countries when Israel was formed in 1948 suddenly had to become part of one national identity. In Israel, uh, the Black Panthers were concerned with the spaces that they had been assigned to live in when they arrived. Oftentimes they were placed in what were known as development towns on the uh, periphery of the country. Sometimes uh, these Arab Jews would be arrested in downtown Jerusalem because they looked with darker skin color as though they were Palestinian. They felt a sense of being second-class citizens, much like African Americans in the U.S. I was living in Egypt, in Cairo, during the time of the Arab Spring. It was something out of a Hollywood movie set, I'd say. The National Democratic Party headquarters, Mubarak's party headquarters, was still smoking because it had been set on fire. I walked into Tahrir Square and saw a, an army tank that no longer had any soldiers in it and had a blue tablecloth placed over it because people wanted to signify that they had taken this for the people. It was amazing to see something that I had studied in a different place and time happen before my own eyes in the contemporary moment because it reminds me that the work I do to try and understand the tactics that people use and the ways in which they express what's important to them, that those things are still really relevant and it's a necessary part of the conversation to understand the history of those groups.